Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and today on this DIY Wednesday video we are in Teacher Jen's backyard to build her a privacy screen. Now, since Jen has allowed me to live with her in the interim of me living in my own house, I am trying to earn my keep. Hence why we redid her dining room table. We recently painted a wall in her family room. We're trying to get her backyard in order so that she will love it more and that she will want to spend more time out here. In an effort to do that, she did have a very old, kind of beat down outdoor patio couch. I did start to redo that couch and it wasn't easy and it wasn't fun. And I got about a quarter of the way through of taking it all apart and decided to abort the project. But I'll show you what I was trying to do and then you'll see why we clearly needed to hit the abort button. As you can see, this couch is that like outdoor rattan and she's had it for several years and the rattan is cracking and coming unraveled. It's just not a good look. So I thought, what if we just took the rattan off of this? It's got to have a metal frame. What if the metal frame is good enough so we can slap on a coat of black paint, buy some cushions and voila, you have a whole new couch set. That's what we're gonna try to do today. And in the long run, what can go wrong? It's already beat down. Jen was already thinking of getting rid of it and buying something brand new. So once I peel off all of the rattan, if it's like still totally ugly and hideous, then worst case, she goes and buys another one, which she was gonna do anyways. So I have my trusty scissors. This rattan stuff is not even real rattan. It's like outdoor rattan. So it's kind of like plasticky. So first step is I'm just gonna try to remove all of this and see like what the shit is happening underneath. Basically it's a test. We're gonna see, can we remove the old rattan and will the metal frame underneath be, I, I don't wanna say beautiful, but I do wanna say like better than good enough to work with. You know how I start these things. It's like up here, seems good, seems doable, but then when it's real world, maybe we have to tweak some things. But really, I'm just gonna sit here in this nice afternoon and take off all of this fucking rattan, and we're gonna see what happens. I just took off the cushions and I realized the seat part also is covered in rattan so that your seat cushions don't fall through. There are support poles here. You know me, I'm like, what about a rope or a twine or a something that we can shoop, 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 shoop. Will that much twine end up costing more than buying a whole new thing? I'll have to price it. Literally just came out here and was like, we're gonna give this a go. I have no supplies other than a pair of scissors. So it's gonna be a step-by-step -step situation. And maybe once we get really into it, we will abort the mission, but I'm gonna give it the old college try. I'm just taking this all off. All this rattan is going. Okay, so here is something that is making me get a little bit alarmed. Every single inch or so, they didn't just spiral like one continuous loop of rattan around here. They only did a loop like this big and they put a staple every single inch. So like not only do we have holes every inch or so going up the entire arm, some of the holes have rust already built up in them. So it's like, do I keep going or do I say no? this is too far gone. How am I going to repair this? I like to think when I'm DIYing that I didn't invent something. I'm thinking there's got to be like a wood putty, but for metal, I know I didn't invent it. It has to exist to protect this from any further rust damage since it is going to be outside. So just wood putty up all of these holes, lightly sand them, spray paint it. I wonder if you can get like this plasticky rattan by the roll and just do the seat in the back in it. I don't really know. But again, these are the things I'm thinking of as I'm taking apart this uh, couch. The abort button pushed on the redo of 
the patio couch. You know, sometimes you just gotta know when to quit. Is it worth all your time? Is it worth the cost of the supplies? Would you be better off just going and buying something new? And in this case, we decided yes. We did end up getting Jen a new outdoor couch. We dyed the cushions so that they were a color that Jen liked better than just the, you know, tan or whatever they were. There were some trials and tribulations with that dye, I'm not gonna lie. The manufacturer, when they sewed those cushions together, they did not sew all of the right sides of the fabric out. By the naked eye, you couldn't really tell because the inside of the fabric is very, very, very similar to the outside of the fabric. However, when they went into the dye bath, you could clearly tell which was the right side of the fabric and which was the wrong side of the fabric because the dye took differently. The wrong side of the fabric, which was supposed to be on the inside, actually turned a beautiful navy blue. The right side of the fabric turned more of a denim color. Okay, fine, that would be fine if all of the cushions were sewn exactly the same way with the right side of the fabric facing out but they weren't. One cushion had the right side of the fabric facing out the entire way. So I had one solid cushion that was denim. Then the middle cushion had one wrong side facing out and one right side facing out. So I had one navy blue side and one denim side. And then the third cushion had both wrong sides of the fabric facing out. So I had one whole navy blue cushion. And then all the backs had the right side of the fabric on the outside. So I had three denim looking back cushions. So what did I do? Couldn't leave it like that. So I literally had to take all of the cushions apart and re-sew them. It was a little bit of a struggle. We would have had no way of knowing that the manufacturer did not sew all of the right sides of the fabric out. You wouldn't have known that. It was impossible to tell. So yeah, while I wasn't thoroughly excited about ripping apart all the cushions and re-sewing them, I did it. So now they're all navy blue. They do have a little denim border. They actually turned out pretty cute. So now she has an outdoor couch that she loves and it really wasn't nearly as hard as redoing the couch that is aborted. So we've got her backyard semi-organized, but now she wants a privacy screen. I'm gonna whisper. So those neighbors, her next door neighbors, they're a little bit close together. I mean, not super close. And there's clearly a fence, but when she comes out of her sliding glass door, they have a window right there. If they were standing in, I don't know what room that is, they could see her. So she wants to put a privacy screen. I decided we're gonna do like, you know, maybe some vines, what have you. So that when she comes out of her sliding glass door, she has a little bit more privacy than she currently does. And I I think doing that, it will make her even more excited about her backyard. So that is what we are going to do today. What I'm gonna do, what the plan is, technically where she wants to go, I could screw the side pieces of the privacy screen directly into like the exterior wall and the exterior pillar of her like overhanging her patio cover. But A, you're not supposed to do that without like a construction permit. You're not supposed to fix anything to the house. So in order to make it freestanding, we're gonna start with a planter box at the base. We're gonna, you know, put dirt and shit in there and that's gonna give area for our vine to grow up the privacy screen. So I'm gonna start with the planter box and then I'm gonna build the screen into the planter box so that it's sturdy, it doesn't fall over, and we can grow a nice little vine up there. So how am I gonna do that? Well, in my head, as you know, it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be perfect, and guess what? We're using tons and tons of free pallet wood. I got three pallets from behind a local grocery store. I've already taken them apart here. You've seen me take apart pallets 8,000 million times. It's labor intensive, but it's nothing hard. You just need a hammer and another hammer and you pry them off. So I have all my pallet wood here. I didn't get rid of one piece. I did end up having to go to the Lowe's to buy one by one. And those are going to be my poles that go up so that I can screw my strips of pallet wood to each one. The only money I've spent so far is on four one by ones and I think that cost me a total of eight dollars. Stain, some screws to put it together, some extra sandpaper because 
we need to pretty these up. Once your palette is completely disassembled or once your palettes are completely disassembled, you're going to want to sand them and trim them up. This one actually broke a little bit when I was prying it off, but that's okay. Waste not, want not. All of my palette pieces, whether wide or skinny, I'm gonna make sure they're straight and even all the way across. So I'm gonna need to cut some of them down the length with my jigsaw. Now, I have some very exciting news for you guys. As you know, I'm staying at Teacher Jen's. Knowing that I was going to be staying here, I did bring a few tools. I didn't bring all of my tools. 97% of my tools are in storage. So my table saw, my chop saw, my circular saw, what I have at Jen's literally is a jigsaw and a palm sander. So this is going to be one of those projects that we are going to make with very minimal tools. No expensive tools are needed. And if you didn't have a palm sander, you could hand sand. I mean, it would take you 8,000 million years to get through all of this pallet wood. Point of the story is we're taking it back old school style. I always preach to you guys, you don't need very many tools. I built a whole shelving unit with a palm sander and a jigsaw. That's exactly what we're gonna do today. I literally don't have saw horses or anything. So this is about finding things in your garage that you can use to elevate the wood if you need to cut it. I don't know, I'm gonna go find bins or paint cans or whatever works. So this is going to be, we can pop in some inspiration pictures here. A very beautiful, privacy screen made with very minimal tools. Super excited about that. And you guys should be too, because this is something you literally could do. Free pallet wood, a jigsaw, and a palm sander, dunzo. Oh, I am gonna use my drill, my screw, just to screw, but you could use a hand screwdriver. No big deal there. It would just take you a little longer, but I did bring my drill. So we're gonna screw this all together pretty fast. That said, I need to prepare all of my planks. I'm going to sand them, trim them, and then I'm going to pre-stain everything before we build. Okay, so I have my makeshift sawhorses, and these are the pieces that I need to edge up with my jigsaw. I did go in and take off my sweatshirt because earlier I was like, ooh, it's chilly. I need to set everything up in the sun. Now it's getting really hot out here and I'm wearing a black t-shirt. So you never know, in a minute I might be in a white tank top because while I enjoy the sun, I don't wanna be sweating my balls off. So I did bring a level because all we wanna do is take a piece of pallet wood that looks a little jig jaggy on the edge or maybe is split in a certain area like this one's split actually pretty far. This one's gonna end up being a very skinny plank. So what I wanna do is decide where I need to chop it to make it smooth and straight. And then I'm just gonna draw a line. I'm gonna jigsaw this section I don't want away. I could measure from bottom edge up, bottom edge up, bottom edge up, but eyeballing is just fine for the purposes we're doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my chop lines on every one so I can just assembly line this bitch. And then we're gonna saw, saw, saw them off. Okay, so all of our lines are drawn and now we just need to jigsaw them off. It is a little tougher with a jigsaw because you're basically freehanding a straight line. They might not be perfectly straight, but that's okay. It's a privacy screen that is gonna have vines growing up it. If one of the boards is slightly not straight or a little bit like this, ain't nobody gonna know and nobody's gonna care. It's gonna look beautiful. So I have my jigsaw and I have my makeshift saw horses and we're just gonna saw along every single one of these lines until all of our boards are trimmed up and then we're going to sand them, all of them, and then stain. Easy. Okay, so the kids next door came outside because it's a beautiful day. They have a jungle gym that they can climb up which peeks over the fence so they're screaming at me like, what are you building? I'm like, leave me alone. Anyways, all of our boards are cut and now we just need to sand them. I did use my handy dandy Black & Decker jigsaw. Just make sure your saw blade is very sharp. Be careful, double check 
where you're cutting. I made sure to remove all of the nails from the palette, but just in case you missed one or when they build palettes, sometimes they recycle wood. So instead of pulling a nail out, they will literally just chop the nail off. So just be careful of that as you're going along sawing. But other than that, with your jigsaw, you should be fine. So now I just need to sit down, probably in the shade, and sand all these bitches. For sanding, I am going to use my handy dandy Black & Decker Palm Sander, not sponsored by Black & Decker at all. I've owned these tools for 80 million years, and I think the reason I have them is because they were cheap or I asked for them for a birthday present. They're good. I am going to use my new favorite sandpaper, the 3M Longer Lasting Sandpaper, not sponsored, but come on 3M, I love you. You do exactly what you say you're gonna do. Just sand everything fairly smooth, get my edges, you know, just prep them for stain. So you've seen me sand 80 million times, so you don't need to watch this. I'm just gonna enjoy my mocha, enjoy the sounds of lawn mowers and children playing, and my palm sander, and I'm gonna sand all of the boards I cut and then all of the boards that didn't need to be cut. So all my wood will be prepped and ready to go the next time you see me. So I have finished sanding and staining all of the wood for the screen. And right now I'm logistically trying to figure out how I'm going to build this planter box out of the scrap pallet wood that I have remaining behind me. I feel like I'm gonna have to piece it together like a puzzle. Some of these scraps, while this one looks okay, the full length, this one's literally crap. Like, I, I can't use this. If I am going to do one rectangle, it needs to be at least as long as this piece of pallet wood. But I don't know if I can do it. So I'm gonna figure that out right now while all the stain is drying over there on the screen. At the very least, maybe we put together the screen and then figure out what the hell is gonna happen after that. In my mind, I had way more pallet wood that would take care of the planter box, but I don't. So now I have to think of something new. Thinking on the fly, thinking on the fly. I'll figure it out, don't you worry. So I have some semblance, is that the right word, of a plan for the planter box. I used base wood of the pallets to build a bottom frame. I just took as wide as the planks are so that they fit right on the inside so that when the screen is built, I can attach my brace boards to the inside of the planter box. I just really fast and easy built a little rectangle that is the size of my planks. It needs a bottom. It needs some sides. What I'm thinking is these palette bases, I guess you could call them. What I'm thinking is because these aren't as thick as these, that I will cut them to fit on the inside and screw in a couple of them like this. And then that way I can lay and screw down scrap wood onto these, which will be attached to these side planks. Does that make sense? But what I think I'm going to do first is now that I have this frame made, I wanna build the screen and mount it in here so that I can tell how tall I need my planter box to be and if in fact I need to go find another pallet or some other wood or if the pallet wood I have here will work. So my plan is put the screen together. All I have is a drill screw gun and no drill bits. I feel splitting is going to happen. Yeah. We might have to just go real easy and pray that we don't split a shit ton of our wood. Should be real good. So on the plus side, I found some drill bits in Jen's garage. At least we won't be splitting any wood. Now I've laid everything out. I wanna secure the top piece and the bottom piece to ensure everything is square. And then I'll come in and fill in all the middle sections. I'm just eyeballing the gaps. I kind of want some to have bigger gaps, some to have littler gaps, more free form, not totally uniform. That's my plan. But right now, would you have ever guess that this is pallet wood? I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. And we've never stained pallet wood before and it looks pretty damn good. Oh, speaking of, what stain did I use? I picked this. It's called semi-transparent red oak, but I don't know if I'd call that red right there. Anyways, let's secure the top and the bottom. I'm gonna pre-drill. So I am using my one by ones. I have one on each end and then one in the middle to support the middle, yeah. Pre-drill, screw, 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 a million times. That's what I'll be doing.
Okay, so now that my top and my bottom are secure, I can now just go and because I only have one drill, instead of switching from drill bit to screw bit, I think I'm gonna drill down all one side, then screw all one side in. Even them up on the other side, drill all down the other side, screw down all the other side, and then do the same thing for the middle. Center post is in the center. We've got our top, our bottom. We should be perfectly square-ish assembly line. Boom, 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 boom. Hopefully I don't break these. Okay, so I have all of this side screwed in and I drilled all the holes to that side, but then the drill battery died and I can't get it off. Hurt my thumb trying to get the stinking battery off so that I can replace it with the battery that I've been charging. I don't know what to do. I am not about to hand screwdriver all of those screws in. I'll just tell you that right now. But the sun, it is a setting and I need to figure some shit out. I just need to screw this. I mean, it's looking so good. So the plan is once I figure out the drill situation so that I can actually screw these in, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my base, hi, put this inside. I'm gonna screw whenever I can get my drill working again. This side to the center of the base and that side to the center of the base. And then the middle, I might secure it, but I feel like it will just be freestanding in the bottom of the base. And once it has a actual bottom on it and dirt, it should be fine and stable. Put some dirt in, put some vines in, voop, 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 vines, grow up this, and then voila, privacy screen but you guys probably won't see it till it's done because really 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 in the grand scheme of things it's just a bunch of drilling and screwing screw all of that side in drill and screw in the center braces secure this to my base of the planter box then I'm gonna take my scrap pallet wood and build up the frame to the planter box so it's actually a box that you can plant shit in so yeah Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know at this point. I need a drill that's charged. Okay, the frame to the planter box is framed out. I have bottom supports going on, both sides filled in. All I need to do is take my scrap pallet wood and fill in the front and the back and bottom. Fingers crossed, I have enough wood for that. But it's coming along. And the planter box is done. I scrapped together some wood for the bottom. I'm just gonna line that in some plastic before I fill it with dirt and a plant. I just need to stain everything so everything's the same color. Look at that sucker. And then we will be done. Yes! Okay, so no, for serious. It looks so good. You guys are going to die and then you're gonna wanna make one for yourself. Are you ready for the big reveal? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I need to back up because it's so big. Look at that. It is so cool. Look at the vine, the planter box. Everything's looking so good. It's amazing and we don't have to see those neighbors right next door i mean what could be better than that right okay so here's what's super great about it for like four free pallets and two afternoons you can make a beautiful privacy screen for your backyard and wherever you put it just get a vine that either likes sun or shade or partial sun or partial shade, whatever for your area. Voila, you've got some peeping Tom neighbors. Put a screen up, grow a vine. It's beautiful. Best part is Jen loves it. Second best part is the wood was all free. I literally bought the stain. I don't know how much stain is, $15. I literally used my palm sander and my jigsaw and my drill with the thing just because I didn't want to have to like hand screw them in, but you could totally hand screw them in. Not a big deal. This can be yours for the low, low price of like $15 and some sweat equity. Oh, I did buy those sideboards. That was $8. You know, whatever eight plus 15 is, that's how much it will cost you. And this thing is huge, like 
huge. Ain't nobody peeping in your backyard after you build this. So yeah, I challenge you, get a palm sander, get a jigsaw, and make this privacy screen for yourself. I dare you. I double dog dare you. And then if you do make it, let me know in the comments. I don't know, um, send a picture, give it to me via email so I can see it. And if you don't wanna stain it, you can paint it. Or if you don't wanna stain it or paint it, you can leave it natural wood. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Just saying. So, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.